Uh, we have David and Ilan from the Red Sea Triangle, and they're going to share a very special presentation with you this evening. Thank you, David and Ilan. Should I start? Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for the Red Sea Triangle uh, presentation. Uh, my name is David. Uh, I'm part of the Red Sea Triangle. And uh, uh, the purpose is to uh, introduce you to uh, a new product, uh, very uh, interesting. And uh, let's start. So. Well. Okay, so uh, we are uh, speaking about a special program that uh, combines three countries in uh, one vacation. And uh, the three countries are Israel, uh, Jordan, and Egypt. And we'll get into the specific information soon. Um, this is our uh, nice area within uh, the planet. Uh, here you can see the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, further south is the Indian Ocean. Uh, leads up all the way to the Red Sea. Uh, here you can uh, see the Sinai Peninsula, which is part of Egypt, and uh, north of it is uh, Israel and uh, Jordan. The big area is Saudi Arabia to the east and to the west is Egypt and you can see the Nile River going to the Mediterranean Sea, Cyprus, Turkey, this is basically the area. If we get a little bit closer, then uh, you can uh, see the Sinai Peninsula here in the middle of the photo. To the north is Israel with its capital, Jerusalem, uh, the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. To the east is the land of the Kingdom of Jordan, the uh, city of Aqaba here, and Amman, the capital, is up here. And Cairo sits next to the Nile River to the west. Okay, that's basically the area we are uh, speaking about. The Red Sea Triangle is the triangle between Egypt, Jordan, and Israel, which is the area that we are uh, concentrate, we, we concentrate in. Okay, so a little bit of uh, history. There is some history that is made uh, today in the States, so I'm sure you all are uh, aware. But, uh, it all started when, uh, um, in 1978, September 1978, there was the peace agreement uh, signed between uh, Menachem Begin and uh, Anwar Sadat, between uh, Egypt and uh, Israel, which uh, created a new era uh, after uh, years of uh, wars. And uh, then the next step, was uh, the peace agreement between Israel and uh, Jordan in October uh, 1994. Uh, actually, very soon after, at 1995, um, I created the idea of Red Sea Triangle uh, concept. And uh, actually, we created the first brochure back then, and uh, in the Peace uh, Committee in uh, Sharm el Sheikh in Sinai, uh, President, President uh, Bill Clinton had uh, held the first uh, Red Sea Triangle brochure as an example for the fruits of peace uh, agreement and the con contribution of uh, tourism to the uh, relationship between the, between the countries. Uh, it's funny that we speak about uh, peace agreements while today, Israel signed a peace agreement with the Emirates and the Bahrain uh, on the, in, the, in the White House. Uh, so uh, this is uh, hopefully uh, another step uh, to 
uh, stabilization of the of the of the area. So uh, the concept the concept is that uh, we are uh, running these uh, tours to Jordan and Egypt for uh, as you can understand from the last millennium. And uh, along the way, we met uh, quite a few friends that uh, started with us as the uh, young tour leaders and divers and tour operators. And we took them with us all those years. And today, we use this friendship to uh, build the bridges between the countries. The atmosphere today is uh, very suitable for operating such a, an operation that uh, this is something that uh, has never been done and uh, selling three countries in one package and actually we can do it because of the very strong relationship between the people that you see on the screen and uh, the smooth uh, operation that we run for many many years so uh, here is me when i was uh, beautiful that's uh, my brother Ilan. We are running the Israeli part of the operation. Here in the middle on the top, you can see Sheikh uh, Umbar, which has a, a fantastic uh, dive center in the Sinai Peninsula, and he's running most of the diving activities. On the bottom is uh, Samech, which is the owner of South Sinai Travel Agency, our partner in Egypt, located in uh, Cairo, Luxor, um, Sharm el Sheikh, there are several offices. Uh, William and Mofid are the partners on the Jordanian side, and we are all connected daily and uh, very good friends uh, looking after uh, the business of each other and uh, mostly looking after our clients. Um, so, basically, what is the triangle? The triangle is one stop shop which means that you have one operator taking care of you uh, all along the way. And uh, let's uh, get into it a little bit further. Uh, we offer flexibility, which means that you can choose one, two or three countries uh, on your visit. You can decide that you want to visit Jordan only, Egypt only or Israel only. Uh, you can choose Israel and Jordan, Jordan and Egypt, Egypt and Jordan, and so on, just two countries, or you can choose to visit in one trip all the three uh, countries involved. Uh, you can choose any amount of days. You can go for a, the minimum time is a three days tour that we offer from uh, Elat to Aqaba and then to Sinai. But this is a little bit, it has to be a part of a longer trip. But uh, then again, you can choose, if you see the last uh, uh, the last uh, uh, paragraph, then uh, you can see that you can uh, choose to do the whole package or just uh, part of the package uh, with us, which means that you can have family tour or another tour to the area and then choose a short trip and not uh, an airport to airport package. Uh, you can choose any starting or ending point, which means you can land in Jordan or Egypt or Israel and fly out again from each of the countries. Um, you can choose to do diving and snorkeling activities, which is uh, the thing we are specialized in. You can see, you can do uh, land excursions. We will get into it uh, soon. And you can do a combination of both, which means you can visit uh, one of the monuments of the area, or two or three or whatever, and then uh, take your cruise or diving, snorkeling activity. Uh, so we think it's the, the most flexible uh, option that uh, you can get. Uh, some of points of interest that uh, the area offers. Before we get into the water, let's see some of the monuments uh, above the water. So here is a picture of uh, the ancient city of Petra, 
which is, a, this is a night picture from a tour that is called Petra by Night. And uh, this is the same place in uh, daylight. Um, probably you are familiar with this uh, from the Indiana Jones movie, but this is only one monument. There is a long uh, trail with uh, fantastic findings and point of interest. Uh, show ancient Egypt with its uh, pyramids, sinks, uh, temples of Luxor, cruise on the Nile, everything is possible. Uh, this is a picture from the top of uh, Mount Masada and the ruins of uh, King Herod's uh, palace. The Dead Sea is uh, just there uh, below, which is the lowest uh, place on earth. Um, some of the religious monuments, uh, we can only, uh, there is not enough to, to tell you what is uh, involved when you speak about uh, Jerusalem, Via Dolorosa, or the monastery of St. Catherine, which is just uh, below uh, Mount Sinai, uh, or the main mosque of uh, Cairo, uh, this is a viewpoint of uh, Jerusalem, Dome of the Rock. This is a picture that shows a, a little bit of the conflicts in the area, which is the most holy, uh, one of the most holy places for the Islam just here, while the holiest place of the Jewish religion is just a few meters uh, next to it. Uh, this is the grave of uh, Jesus, uh, which uh, gets so many visitors. It's one of the of the stations when you take the tour of uh, the Via Dolorosa. Uh, again, the church, the monastery of Saint Catherine and Mount Sinai. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Mount Nebo, which is uh, in Jordan. And this is the place that, according to Bible, uh, Moses uh, see the land which uh, he never uh, went in. Uh, the Holy Land, the Promised Land is just down there. And this is the, the viewpoint from the place where the people of Israel uh, stood before uh, entering the Holy Land on the way from uh, Egypt. This is Wadi Ram, one of the most amazing uh, desert area in uh, Jordan. We offer also uh, trips to this uh, place where you can uh, sleep in a bedroom tent, luxury bedroom tent with uh, fantastic food, campfire, million stars, and the uh, amazing atmosphere. Normally, uh, this tour is taken uh, on the way from Petra, between Petra and Aqaba, uh, for those of you who uh, would like to appreciate the desert. Uh, that's uh, one of the unique views of the Dead Sea, the lowest place on Earth, where you can float uh, in the water, and, and enjoy uh, the, the, the mud, putting mud over you, so consider the mud with the with very good uh, influence on your skin. And another night in the desert, we can do these uh, trips for any, any of the three countries. We do this trip from Elat, from Aqaba, from Sharm Sheikh, and uh, we can even uh, take a camel ride and uh, get uh, to know the local Bedouins. Um, these are two residents of the area. And the clear water of the Red Sea behind. Uh, some of the amazing markets that you have the options to visit. It's uh, the El Khalili Bazaar in the Cairo, which is considered a very interesting and uh, fulfilling place. You can walk there for hours. 
and uh, some of the spices, the old city of Jerusalem, and uh, some shopping and uh, adventure time in the city of Elat, which is considered uh, quite uh, modern. Um, let's take let's take a short video. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seat. Put your luggage in the cupboard above your head and fasten. Okay, so uh, I hope the vacation is more relaxed than the, than the video, but uh, it's actually showing uh, some of the activities you can uh, do during your vacation. Uh, this was a video that uh, we created about a lot. Actually, a lot is sits just in the middle, which means that uh, a lot is located on the tip of the Red Sea, on the northern tip. Uh, opposite is the city of Aqaba, and just uh, seven miles south of Elat is the border with Egypt. So uh, probably when you take the three countries, you will uh, uh, go through Elat as well, and it's good to know uh, all the options. Um, diving and snorkeling. Diving and snorkeling, this is actually uh, what we specialize in. Uh, me, myself, I'm a master instructor, and uh, my brother is the same. And uh, I'm doing uh, diving trips to the Red Sea since the early 80s. And uh, let's start uh, speaking about uh, diving and stopping in the Red Sea. Uh, in this uh, photo, you can see the uh, reefs along the coast. And uh, let's go. Uh, to the next one, these are the dolphins at Dolphin Reef, which is actually located in Elat. It's a unique uh, dolphin observation area. The unique thing is that the dolphins are coming and going as they wish. They are not uh, captured in any way. So all day long they are uh, traveling in the open sea and they come to uh, 
observe the people as we are there to observe them, uh, which created a very unique uh, relationship between the mamas and the, and the audience. Uh, another photo from uh, Biri Ovelat. And another one, there is a, a nice wreck there that uh, you may visit. But I think that the strongest part of a lot is for those who are uh, wishing to do their uh, learn to dive program. Uh, it's a combination of uh, several things. One is uh, the, the, you can just enter the water at any location and not travel too far from your uh, from your from the dive center. Just put your tank on and uh, dive in the water. Uh, the sea is very calm, there are not uh, major currents or uh, disturbances, and uh, it's a perfect place for, for uh, doing your uh, learn to dive program. Uh, it's really possible to do the, the first uh, learn to dive program and then go on and do your dives uh, back south in uh, Egypt or whatever. I did it that uh, with my uh, uh, twin girls. We did the dive course in a lot and then we went on a boat cruise, which was a perfect uh, combination of uh, two weeks uh, holiday. Uh, it's very important to, to understand that uh, snorkeling is, uh, offers a wide range of uh, activities uh, as diving. We do have uh, guides for uh, snorkelers that goes in the water with them and explains them uh, what they see, takes them to the points of interest. And uh, we do think that snorkeling is uh, as good as diving. This is a, a wreck in uh, Aqaba. Actually, uh, the Jordanian authorities, they did a lot in the last years to uh, create a, a artificial uh, a dive uh, sites. This is a ship that was sunk in the late 70s. Uh, it's called Cedar Pride. And it's a wonderful dive. And uh, this is another uh, photo of the wreck. Since we did this presentation, they uh, sank a few tanks, helicopters, and uh, army vehicles. They call it the Army Museum. And uh, it's an amazing dive site. It's very big, uh, suitable for two or three dives even. A fantastic uh, photo uh, opportunities. And uh, it's really worth it. Uh, there are two airplanes uh, sank there as well. Uh, one is the Hercules, which was a little bit damaged in the last storm. And there is also uh, um, another uh, Boeing or uh, aircraft, which you can go in and uh, dive through the aircraft all the way to the cockpit. Some of the uh, fish in Jordan. And, uh, let's go uh, to Egypt now. And I must tell you that as, as you go south in the Red Sea, it's becoming better and better. And uh, um, Egypt is the best uh, location for diving, for enthusiast divers in the, in the area. This is something uh, we must uh, tell you. So if you start your vacation, sometimes it's better to uh, end with uh, diving in uh, Egypt as it's getting better and better uh, all the time. Uh, these are the corals, uh, famous corals of the Red Sea. Uh, with the schools of Antias uh, uh, orange uh, schools, um, which covers the reefs and the colors and the clear water. This is a classic Red Sea um, scenery. Uh, liverboards. Uh, we run a fleet of uh, liverboards, uh, quite few out of uh, Sharm Sheikh, out of uh, Ogada. And uh, this is, uh, as we say, the top of the line. I mean, going on a boat for a week, doing your unlimited diving with your uh, food and with your uh, caring crew, 
uh, is, to my opinion, the best way to explore uh, the location. And uh, in our programs, we do offer uh, visiting the country of Israel, Jordan, and then go to Egypt and take a week a cruise or three days or four days. Uh, we give all the options. The three and four days are mini safaris, and the one week and more is the safari. And uh, this is one of the boats. And you can get uh, with the boats to some uh, fantastic locations. This is a photo from the wreck of Tisabon, which was sank. It's a British uh, ship full of uh, army cargo that was sank in the Gulf of Suez. Uh, Jacques Cousteau discovered this uh, ship 10 years after it was sunk. It was sunk in 1941. Uh, Jacques Cousteau found, found it with the Calypso crew, 1951, and then it's gone. We never marked it on any map. We just knew that it's there. And uh, I had the privilege of finding the, the wreck in 1991. And uh, since then, it became the most visited the uh, dive site in the, in the Red Sea. Um, when you go further south, you have the ability to meet uh, more sharks. Uh, this is the Oceanic White Tip, which is one of the highlights uh, in the area. Um, and uh, let's take a short video again. Well, this is a sample 10 days itinerary. Uh, as I say, we offer uh, shorter visits and longer visits. Uh, in this uh, sample, you can uh, see that we offer Jerusalem, Dead Sea, and Elat. In Jordan, Amman, Petra, Wadi Ram, and Aqaba. Uh, and Egypt, in the Sinai Desert, and Cairo. Uh, a sample is a uh, you land in Israel at this uh, sample. You can, as I said, you can do it from any other uh, place. And then uh, we take a day tour through Jerusalem. Uh, we visit the Dead Sea and overnight in uh, Jordan. We cross the border in the same day and, uh, and sleep in Aqaba. Then we take a Petra day tour and the uh, Wadi Ram desert day tour. Uh, take some uh, snorkeling or diving in Aqaba, uh, cross back to Elat for one day snorkeling or uh, diving, and then you can choose three days liveaboard or three days hotel in Sharm el-Sheikh and daily board dive. Uh, the last day is uh, the Cairo tour, including the pyramids, the Sphinx, Egyptian Museum, and the bazaar, and then you take your flight home. As I said, in this uh, option, you land in Israel and you fly out of Cairo. You can do it the opposite day, 
you can do it a uh, longer trip, any other option is, uh, is uh, possible. Um, so that's basically it. I would like to thank uh, Deep Blue Adventures for hosting us. And we are here for uh, your questions, if you have any. Thank you, David. We really appreciate it. Um, I know that I am super excited about bringing these itineraries to our clientele. Um, you know, a lot of people heard about the Red Sea. Some people have heard just amazing how amazing the diving is in uh, Jordan um, and the cultural experiences, everything that await in that area and Israel. But I, what I really think is I don't think too many of us think about going and combining them. And, you know, as your 10 day itinerary just showed, being able to see so many different things and so many different experiences above and below all in a 10 day itinerary. I, I think it's a super, super exciting thing that you're doing there. Yeah. We're trying to, uh, to do a lot in, uh, to maximize the trip, as we say. But of course, in any itinerary, you can choose to take two days leisure here and two days leisure there. You don't have to do it at, uh, as it uh, says in the itinerary. But uh, some people like to maximize the stay and uh, see as many as, uh, as they can. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's phenomenal. And I love that people can tailor it as well for as long or short that they have. So um, we are opening the floor for questions. Uh, for anybody that has any questions, you can type it in the chat box. You can type it in the Q&A box. Uh, you can raise your hand in the chat box and uh, you can ask your questions directly to David. Everyone is being Super, super quiet tonight. Usually we're being hit by a whole bunch of questions, but I don't know if everybody is just mulling it over. There was so much imagery um, in those videos. They were fantastic and lots of photographs. So I don't know if everybody's just processing everything they saw. Um, I'll go ahead and ask you a question, you know, that we get a little bit, if maybe you could kind of share. Uh, a lot of people from the U.S. are hesitant to visit the Red Sea because they're apprehensive um, about safety and things like that. Do you mind sharing a little bit your thoughts um, and your experiences firsthand on the ground in this region? Sure, sure. We, we, we are uh, not uh, security people. They're not, uh, you know, we, we are people that belong to the industry of tourism. Uh, first of all, so any formal uh, travel warnings or whatever, it's not up to us, but we are very much aware of uh, what's happening uh, around us. And uh, I must tell you that we are running those trips for so many years, and there is so much uh, uh, information about uh, the area. Uh, Daesh here and ISIS there and uh, whatever. Now I'm not uh, going to uh, to uh, say that uh, things does not exist in the area, but it's quite far. The area of that we are speaking about uh, is is uh, is completely quiet, which means that uh, let's let's take the Sinai area for example. It's a huge area. We are normally traveling on the east uh, coast of Sinai, along the coast of the Red Sea. And uh, there are some uh, security issues on the Mediterranean coast, which is uh, about 500 kilometers uh, apart. And on the way, it's half of the Egyptian army. So uh, all the hotels and uh, the roads are completely filled with the tourists and uh, there is not uh, any problem in the area. Uh, same about Israel. Yes, there are some problems in the north border of Israel uh, and in the west coast uh, next to Gaza, but it has nothing to do with the city of Elad, Aqaba, Dead Sea, Jerusalem. All of this uh, area is uh, very, very safe. And the uh, people are very hospitable, and uh, I don't think you will feel anything uh, except uh, the hospitality and smiles. 
Uh, of course, uh, the times are changing and we have to be aware, and, uh, but I think that you can get from us most of the information uh, all the time, which means that if there is tension or there is anything uh, in a certain uh, time, we will be the first to tell you. Uh, we are not interested of uh, putting any risk to our visitors and we are very much aware of, and uh, I think you can uh, trust us to be in very good hands. Uh, yeah. That's uh, basically the, the answer. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, when you go from going from one country to another, uh, you make that seamless, don't you? And you uh, accompany yeah. it and, and set everything up so they're able to easily transit from one country to another if they are combining two or three areas. This is connected to the to the one of the first uh, photos with the friendship uh, 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 build, build, building bridges. And uh, the thing is that it's a uh, one operation. And uh, if you cross from Israel to Jordan, we'll bring you to the Jordanian border to the Israeli side. And our representative is already waiting in the Jordanian side. And every border crossing is easy and uh, uh, really comfortable. So uh, we are experts of uh, transferring people from hand to hand without you even noticing. So, so that's basically the success of the program. Uh, and this is why we can do it and others cannot because uh, you cannot rely on people that uh, you just met or operators that you found, found on the internet and stuff like that. We know the people, we know the, their sons, we know their families, we know them for many years and uh, we trust them completely. Uh, this is uh, already working. Uh, every day, not now in the Corona time, our borders are closed and times are difficult. But uh, we know these people for so many years and uh, all the transactions from hand to hand, you can uh, meet five or six different tour operators in one trip without even noticing. And that's basically the secret behind the, the possibility of offering such a, a program. It's, it's super fantastic. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, Joshua Sprinkle, he doesn't have a, a microphone, but he's asked, do you have uh, any Nile River itinerary? Sure, sure. The, the itinerary in Egypt is uh, filled with uh, options. We do the trips from Luxor to Aswan, from Aswan to Abu Simbel temples. Um, uh, we have superb guides and uh, we do have offices in every of these locations. We have an office in Cairo, we have an office in Luxor, we have an office in Aswan. We have excellent hotels. We work with the uh, amazing uh, night cruises. Uh, normally you can take between uh, three, four or one week uh, cruises. Uh, we stop along the cruise get off the, the boat, take a tour uh, to the Edfu uh, temples, to the, to the Valley of the Kings, to the Valley of the Queens. Uh, this is a fantastic option. You can take one week uh, cruise on the Nile and then uh, one week cruise uh, to the Oceanic White Deep in the Red Sea. All the options are there. And, uh, it's highly recommended. Thank you. Um, and I know, you know, a lot of our customers are familiar with the Red Sea, with the different areas and things like that. Um, can you tell us as far as uh, Jordan and Israel, what would be some highlights or special seasons for, for diving and snorkeling in Jordan and Israel? I would say that uh, diving in Jordan and diving in Israel is more calm. It's not as a, a, there are no walls, no wall diving, no uh, strong currents. It's very suitable for families, for people who want to learn to dive, for people who want to take it easy, for people who want to enjoy the 
lentils as well. And uh, uh, go shopping, visit markets, take uh, nice uh, snorkeling and diving. Uh, there are amazing uh, uh, small creatures in uh, Elat and Aqaba. It's fantastic for night dives. Uh, we started to do some black water dives as well in, uh, in Elat. And uh, basically, if you want to hit the Red Sea at its best, Egypt. Okay, there is no competition between the three uh, locations. We're trying to be, um, to give the true and right explanation for every location. So uh, we will never tell you, go and dive a lot, it's better than Egypt, or go and dive a Aqaba, and, uh, and so on. So for sure, if you have a group of divers that are uh, uh, looking for the deep blue, and uh, the sharks, and uh, the wall dives, Egypt is the location. If you look for a family trip with a nice hotel, with a lot to dive, with uh, some uh, land excursions, go out in the evening for shopping, stuff like that, Jordan and Elias. Thank you. Lionel, you're on live with David with your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, so I was just wondering what time of the year would be best uh, to do a 10 day trip and visiting all three countries? Uh, we are uh, quite uh, north of the equator. We are 30 degrees north of the equator, which means that uh, we do have summer and uh, winter differences, uh, unlike other uh, locations in the world, which are very uh, close to the equator. Um, July and August are hot, which means it's over 40 uh, centigrades. Uh, it's hard for me to translate it into Fahrenheit at the moment. But in January and uh, February are quite cold. Uh, again, uh, the temperature of the water is nearly the same all year around. So now we are speaking about going out of the water, putting a t-shirt or putting a sweatshirt. That's basically the, the difference. And uh, there are some areas in the Red Sea which are more difficult for diving due to sea conditions during March or February, such as the deep south of Egypt uh, in the direction of Brother Islands and Dedalus Reef and so on. Uh, so it will be difficult to uh, give you this service uh, on those months. Uh, otherwise, personally, I, I, I prefer uh, the times where there are a little bit clouds and the uh, spotlights on the water, which is between seasons. So let's say that uh, if you travel between uh, September and December, it is fantastic. If you travel between March and, uh, and uh, July, it will be fantastic. And uh, the peak of, uh, of the summer and peak of uh, winter, is uh, there are things that you should be aware of. Uh, cover yourself nice in the sun, drink a lot of water, everything will go uh, perfectly. In winter, you should uh, have the proper uh, clothing. It will be perfect. So basically, we're operating 12 months. All right. Sounds good. That's everything for you, Lionel. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, for now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if your primary focus is diving, I would perhaps, you know, start there with the Red Sea and, and what would be if there's certain phenomena you want to see or season and then build around that. It's just, uh, it sounds like year round weather wise would be fantastic topside. It's just how hot or cool it would be. Um, so I just, I would say really, if, if you're looking to do a dive trip combined with land base, maybe choose your time of year around the diving and then either, you know, if it's too hot, then as David said, take precautions for the sun and stay in hydrated. And if you're able to hit it when it's a little bit cooler, if all things are equal, um, 
try and stay out of that sun a little bit with a little bit of cloud cover just to give you a break from the heat because 40 Celsius is, I can't do that math right now either, uh, but I've got to tell you that it's, that's hot. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, a couple of years ago, I, was, I dove in Urgada and we did Egypt and it was almost 50. So, I mean, yeah. I mean it was in late May, beginning of June, I think, but it was particularly hot. Yeah, um, it's getting hotter in uh, July, August, <laughs> even uh, hotter. But, uh, but, but let's refer to the water temperature. Normally, uh, as I said, we are quite north of the equator, so uh, it's it's a five mil. It's not a uh, shorty. It's not a uh, uh, surfing suit. It's a. Uh, uh, well, I dove with a shorty. That was enough. Yes, yes, it's possible, but uh, it's always uh, recommended to be prepared. And some people suffer from uh, the cool water more than others. So it's really personal, but uh, we normally use the, the, the five meal suits. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, this is your last chance. Um, otherwise, if you think of anything later, you can always email us, send us a Facebook message, all that good stuff, and uh, we will be glad to um, answer your questions that way. We do have a little bit on our website right now, um, just kind of introducing and giving you an idea of what this is about and a synopsis of the three different countries and what those highlights are. But really this is a, a personalized tailored vacation. This is something where you come to us and you tell us what you're looking for, whether it's animals, experience, if you're like, I definitely want to be Petra or I want to combine all three, but I only have seven days. You let us know and we will build you a personalized itinerary with David and Ilan. And, um, and then we can change that to suit if there's anything that doesn't quite make the mark. Uh, Christopher White, you have your hand up. You are unmuted and on with David. Okay, I was just, hello and thank you very much. Um, question, and I was going to just type it up too, and you kind of answered it right then. The mod or the basic vacation that David showed us with one day per country and then a three or four day liverboard trip. Is there basic prices like one if you if we did that, is there a basic price for that part so we can put it in our mind what we need to have to plan a vacation of this magnitude? And then of course it changes possibly depending on seasons. And is it better to go on a liverboard? Because you also saw option it could be liverboard or, or hotels and the diving. Uh, I suggest that if you have the three, four days time uh, staying in the uh, Britannia Peninsula, going from a lot, I would suggest you take the liverboards because uh, on the liverboards you do more diving. You can do four dives a day and while during your beach dive it's less and uh, more uh, complicated. I would, I would, I would uh, take the liverboard again if you prefer to meet people, visit some restaurants, or take a, then, then the option of the hotel is, uh, exists. Uh, sometimes people uh, are traveling with family members which are not divers. So they would like to stay in the pool, in the hotel, uh, while, while you take your uh, day cruise. So it's yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm thinking more of a seven day liverboard plus a day or two in the beginning to make sure everything shows up before I get on a boat for a week, all my sure. dive gear and pick cameras and stuff. Sure. And then before I go back home, also, because I had some friends that did something like this. They came in a day or two days early, they did some stuff, and then they stayed, did their seven day liverboard, and they stayed an extra two days in Egypt to see some of the incredible things in Egypt. And I like that idea. It's a good idea. I agree. So that that's the kind of thing I've been in my mind planning, trying to figure out how much of that would cost. Uh, I just got a quote from somebody said the liverboard was like twenty two, twenty four hundred dollars for a week in March. And that was a seven day, I think it was North North Red Sea. I think I think that uh, at this stage we are uh, uh, 
we find ourselves in a very strange uh, situation. You know, things are not working for the last few months. And uh, things are changing as well. In Egypt, in Israel, in, uh, two operators are uh, disappearing and appearing. Uh, so I suggest that uh, if you have a specific request, just send a mail to, uh, to uh, Deep Blue Adventures. Uh, we will uh, give all the answers very soon. We work very quickly and uh, then uh, you can get uh, the, the price estimation again. Once you, once you book a certain trip, a certain date, price may change a little bit, but, uh, but you will get the idea of, of uh, pricing. Okay, thank you. You're most welcome. Yeah, and I know um, Lionel as well as Christopher is, is asking for a ballpark for that 10 day trip. So David, I will get with you and, and uh, in the next couple of days and get that to Lionel and Christopher, just approximate um what they could expect using that three-day liverboard um again right now we that's why we don't have package pricing on our website is because right now things are in a state of flux with corona and everything else so we we had some sample package pricing for you and we deliberately didn't put it on the website because everything is changing um, a little bit there. So it's, it's easier right now for us to just do it on a per quote basis. Um, but certainly to give you an idea and a starting point financially, uh, Lionel and Christopher and anybody else that wants it, I can get you a, a, an idea of pricing in the next day or two from David and Alan, just to give you a starting point. Uh, Christopher, you had said that the Liverpool alone that you got a quote for was around 2200 I will say that in the Red Sea, there are so many operators uh, for liverboards and uh, land-based, but for liverboards, the liverboard length of time, the quality of the boat, and uh, how much they charge, even for the same itinerary but different boat, swings wildly. Um, it really does. It's amazing. Yes. It's the same all over the world. If you check the Maldives or the, the, the Far East or whatever, in any, every place, every boat is uh, offering a, a different price. So normally, normally what we do is we uh, send offers for three or four uh, different boats. So you can choose, you can choose the, the, the certain boat, you can choose the, the level of, of the service, and uh, we let you choose. That's basically the, 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 the idea. And, uh, and then, uh, yes, you can take the decision that uh, is uh, suitable for you. And that's what we do as well, Christopher, is, is like we know those boats. We don't work with every liverboard out there in the Red Sea because there's so many and we like to know the operators that we're putting you with. Um, part of why it, it goes swing so wildly is because a lot of those boats out there, and I, I don't mean to generalize people, but uh, you know, I'm from the UK, so I'm gonna speak from first-hand experience. Um, Europeans and Brits are, are very much known for backpacker style, you know, um, and, and they go out to the Red Sea a lot. This is a Brit's version of the Caribbean. So um, a lot of those boats are more catered towards, you know, the food's okay, the bed is okay. <laughs> you know, bring your own shampoo and things like that, maybe even bring your own bedding. Um, whereas the US, when you're spending that kind of money, you're sitting on a flight for 10 hours or what have you, most of our American clientele are looking for at least, um, not necessarily upscale liverboards, although certainly some of our clients do like to to you know, spoil themselves with that, but even just what you consider basic amenities on a liverboard when you think of, you know, most aggressors or the old Peter Hughes days or, or other liverboards in that caliber. Um, so we tend to steer towards those for the most part, but if you're like, well, I, I found this liverboard for 2200 and it's doing the same itinerary for this one for 15, what's the difference? we'll be able to tell you what those differences are. And then you can always select to go with the cheaper option if you prefer, but at least you're going in a way. Uh, I, I want to say one more thing about it is that we, we, we do, off, most of the people going to Egypt, they'll take the boats from uh, the, the Bugada or Mausa Alam, 
and the, 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 the option of diving the, the Gulf of Aqaba is uh, a bit more unique because the uh, Gulf of Aqaba is a deep part of the, of the Red Sea. Uh, some walls are uh, more than 3,000 feet uh, going down below the surface. And uh, there are certain places that uh, the audience uh, doesn't really know. Places like the hub or, uh, or going out of uh, Sharm el Sheikh uh, offers diving in some of the best uh, spectacular, spectacular uh, locations, such as uh, Ras Mohammed, uh, Straits of Tehran, uh, the, the Blue Hole of, uh, of uh, the Hub. And these are places that uh, we do operate uh, liveaboards there as well, uh, and uh, also accommodation in the, on the beach and day trips. So I think that uh, it's really wise to, to, uh, to coordinate with us and get to know some new locations that uh, normally people don't go there and, uh, and less crowded. So this is uh, something I recommend to, to check in advance. Thank you. All right, it looks like that is all of our questions from everybody this evening.